this man retrieved a bear cub that had lost its mother. After being rescued and raised, it became intelligent and became the man's exclusive bodyguard and best man. Positive Energy Rescue A little bear Sporadic Repay the kindness Goodness Touching Warmth The man accidentally rescued a bear cub, who grew up to be his loyal bodyguard. It is said that everything is full of emotions. Not only humans, but many animals also have human feelings, so many people like to keep pets for comfort. However, many people have raised dogs and cats, but never have had bears. Because in everyone's impression, bears are ferocious animals that will bring danger to human beings. But when bears develop an emotional bond with humans, they can also become family. American zoologist Kai Shandizen found a dead female bear in a bear sanctuary one day in January 2002. The mother bear was accompanied by two cubs. If they continued like this, they would surely die. Kaishi was determined to raise the two newborn bear cubs. She didn't expect the incredible friendship she and the bears developed. Despite Kaishi's efforts, there was only one cub left in the end. She named the little bear Lantasi. It took Kaishi as its parent. Kaishi had a lot of experience as an animal trainer. She was committed to raising Lantasi as a member of society rather than a wild killing machine. It could still be called a miracle, although it was not certain that this relationship could be established between a normal man and a normal bear, right? Day after day, the bond between Bulutasi and Kaishi deepened. Their relationship had been changing until they became friends. There was a relationship of trust between them that could not be expressed in words. Lantasi was a member of the family, which meant that Lantasi attended Kaishi's wedding. After Kaishi got married, their relationship didn't change either. Kaishi and Lantasi would go out fishing, go to the forest or go to the swimming pool together when they needed each other. While their relationship seemed dangerous, they were harmonious, making it feel like they were living together for granted. Sometimes people and animals met miraculously and developed miraculous relationships. Lantasi had not received wild training from the female bear and was completely wary of humans as it had been living with humans. Now, Lantasi lives with Kaishi in the bear protection base set up by Kaishi. Animals and humans have personalities, and they rarely get along very well, it's a special case after all. Bears and humans rarely build such friendship, so even if you see wild bear cubs, don't keep them lightly. It's better to leave it to a professional animal protection organization. No matter how ferocious animals are, they can be domesticated by humans, and even bring more beautiful feelings to humans. The Coast Avenue restaurant in Beirut, the capital of Lebanon, had a special guest. A white pelican named Awe was rescued by a restaurant owner and his son when it nearly died overseas last February. Originally it was a wild pelican, but it was very close to the shopkeepers. It made customers happy every day it went to the store. This restaurant had a unique regular who visited at least three times a day, it was Awe. The restaurant's owner, Ali, and his son, Aomer, spotted it while out fishing in February. Awe, who was floating at sea at the time, was said to be bleeding from an injured foot and had a part of its wing peeled off, covering its body with mud and looking badly injured. Later they learned that it seemed to be still having a fever at the time. Aomer liked animals very much and immediately started to rescue Awe. He contacted the local wildlife rehabilitation rescue group. With the help of the group, Aomer decided to temporarily take care of Awe with his father until it recovered. Awe became the mascot at the restaurant. For the past six months, it had been eating fresh fish every day in the restaurant and had slowly recovered. Now, it will throw the fish it doesn't like to the floor willfully. But it's close to Aomer. 
Dazawe, who usually lives in Fisherman's Bay a few meters away from the restaurant, do it for gratitude or for food? Awe seemed to have played a role in the thriving business in the store. Many customers visited the store because of Awe's cute appearance. One day, a local reporter saw Awe while they were eating. He filmed it and shared it on Twitter. Later, Awe received the attention of local media. Lebanon, which suffered the worst economic crisis last year, was in dire straits. Coupled with the epidemic and social unrest, Beirut's economy was struggling. In this situation, Awe's presence warmed people's hearts and brought little hope. But Ali and Aomer, while happy, were also worried. Awe was in the spotlight, but it's still recovering and they didn't want to stress it out. Awe was not a pet-like dog and cat, but a wild pelican, so most of the guests understood and didn't touch it. The fishermen and we loved Awe and fed it often. Everyone was protecting Awe. Okay, that's today's story. Opening to wait for her, despite the fact that she was first intimidated by the creature, as a result of the bear-related cautionary tales that Marissa had heard, she was nervous, however, she observed that the bear did not exhibit any symptoms of animosity, which dispelled her anxieties. Marissa's apprehension subsided as she realized that the bear did not appear to be a threat, which was an intriguing discovery, she felt a strange connection between them, and she had a gut feeling that the bear might want her assistance. Even though she was aware of the dangers associated with being in close proximity to a bear, she was unable to shake. The impression that the bear was not hostile, determined to escape, Marissa went into the woods with the bear, despite the fact that she was surrounded by people who were urging her to run away. Marissa, who was unfazed by the bear's level-headed manner, made the decision to record the encounter by texting her location to her boyfriend, Derek, so that someone would be aware of her locations no matter what. As Marissa and her companions continued to travel deeper into the forest, she became aware of the passage of time and studied the bear's behavior. After a while, the bear slowed down and started looking around at its surroundings, seeing that Marissa was becoming increasingly nervous, she began to wonder about the bear's motives and, with a sense of sorrow, became aware of the potential risk. Marissa let out a gasp as she came closer to a tree that the bear had been concentrating its attention on. She then realized that the creature had brought her to a campsite, it was within her. Power to safeguard the cub and put an end to the disquieting designs of the traveler. Marissa, upon inspecting the campsite, found a tent and evidence of a recent bonfire, both of which suggested that the campers had left the area in a hurry. As a result of her curiosity, she couldn't help but take a look inside the open tent. She found a locket that contained a family portrait, a camera that had a memory card that was only partially full, and a faded diary that had a bare insignia on it. All of these items were found among the clothing and maps, the first excitement that the traveler had about exploring the woodland was revealed to Marissa as she turned the pages of the diary, when he declared an intense desire to find a rare white fur bear cub for a documentary, however, the tone changed, he was looking for the little bear, the entries became more ominous, describing the strategies that would be used to capture the cub, cages and bait. Marissa felt a wave of dread sweep over her as she became aware of the depth of the traveler's objectives, which were alarming. Marissa struggled to make a decision between rushing to the next ranger station or following the clues and venturing into the forest herself, she was caught between the need to act quickly and the need to give thorough consideration to the situation, her shoulders were weighed down by the burden of responsibility, and she contemplated whether or not she should put her faith in the bear that was standing outside. With its persistent behavior and mute plea, it appeared as though the bear had faith. In her ability to make the appropriate decision, possibly because it sensed her intention to safeguard the youngster, in order to protect the bear cub and prevent the traveler from carrying out his intentions, Marissa was resolute in her determination to do whatever it necessary to accomplish this, as she followed the pain screams. Marissa's every step was driven by the pressing need to bring the mother bear back together with her youngster. Her determination became stronger with each moan and echo that she heard. Which tugged at her heart, Marissa was moving in the direction of the sounds when she came across a trap that had just been set up, it was a solitary yet menacing reminder of the potential for harm, close by, she found across a camera that had been hurriedly discarded, and it had captured photographs of the forest, 
but there was no evidence of the bear. Marissa, who was determined not to give in to hopelessness, refocused her attention on the screams and continued to move deeper into the forest. With the bear, they traveled together till they reached an area that contained a number of enormous cages. A smaller cage was lying on its side, with its door ripped open, it had tufts of bear fur hooked on its sharp edges, which was an even more distressing phenomenon. An abandoned tranquilizer dart was found in the vicinity, when Marissa felt the weight of the cub's fate crushing down on her. She turned around and went back to the campground without any hesitation, as Marissa made her way back. To the campsite, she rummaged through the disparate items that were stored within the tent, the discovery of a set of wire cutters, which she discovered among the maps, clothes, and tools, provided her with a brief moment of comfort. On the other hand, she was suddenly pulled to the sound of rustling that was coming from outside, a pair of eyes could be seen glinting from the edge of the clearing as Marissa gingerly emerged from the opening. It was evident that someone had been watching and waiting, Marissa readied herself as muffled sounds became distinguishable due to the fact that she was now aware that she was no longer alone undertaking her objective, they were talking about something beyond the clearing and their words blended together with the sounds of the woodland around them, there were possibly three persons chatting, when Marissa heard a voice hissing about her return to the encampment, her pulse rate increased, and she became more anxious, she listened to them, approaching individuals while crouching low beneath the tent. Praying that her hiding would continue to be successful, Marissa took a deep breath as she realized that she was now directly involved in an operation that had taken an unexpected and perhaps hazardous turn, as one of the shadows neared her hiding position, she realized that she was now actively participating in the mission as the traveler from the diary emerged, his expression was contorted, and his fury was clear to see, two other people joined him in his search for something, and they were. Armed with nets and other equipment, Marissa was the target of his taunts as he held her gaze, her hold on the knife became increasingly firm, and a palpable standoff began, with each passing second feeling like it would never end, the choice to lunge to the side was made in a split second by Marissa, who used the element of surprise to her advantage, while the traveler was making preparations to intercept. The adult bear let out a roar, which caused a distraction, taking advantage of the opportunity. Marissa made a hasty retreat into the woods, carrying a knife, with the intention of evading her pursuers by utilizing the thick underbrush. The pursuit had begun when Marissa arrived at the clearing, she discovered a scene that broke her heart. The cub, with its pure eyes, was ensnared in a net and whimpering gently, the moment Marissa recognized the cub and the circumstances. Everything fell into place for her, the actions of the adult bear, which included its commitment and sense of urgency, were all attempts to save its young, they were not merely any animals, rather, they were a family that was struggling to stay alive while Marissa approached the entangled youngster with caution, the adult bear kept a watchful eye on her as she worked on the snare, Locating the weak points in it, the cub was finally set free and made its way back to its mother with a single final pull, on the other hand. The circumstances did not permit a prolonged reunion to take place, voices. From a distance and rustling were indicators of impending peril. The traveler and probably other individuals were moving closer with their intentions being made apparent, as she positioned herself between Marissa and the approaching danger, the adult bear let out a ferocious growl as she stood at a distance, Marissa was overcome with feelings of excitement and relaxation, Marissa felt a silent thank you as the enormous beast laid her head briefly against hers, she had just witnessed the deep link that existed between the mother bear and her baby, Marissa, proceeded along a trail that was not spotted by anyone as she followed the bear's lead, upon her exit from the woods, the sunlight appeared to be more brilliant, and the air looked to be more crisp on her return to her life, Marissa was unable to shake the intense feelings she was experiencing, the expedition had been a test of her bravery and had turned into a journey of self-discovery, it had also resulted in the formation of a great connection with nature and the wild, which had profoundly altered her, that's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story Ethan, a small boy, was playing in the woods close to his house when he noticed a wolf loitering at the edge of the trees, as opposed to the fear that was anticipated, Ethan experienced a sense of wonder, rather than giving the impression of being hostile, the wolf gave off the impression that it was attempting to communicate something. The wolf approached Ethan with caution and then receded into the trees. 
Almost as if it were inviting him to comply with its advances, Ethan made the decision to chase the wolf to find out what it might be trying to tell him. He was intrigued by the possibility that it was trying to communicate with him, it was the wolf that took the lead, and he would periodically check to make sure that Ethan was following. The sounds and images that were familiar to me in the woods gradually morphed into something that was more mysterious and unknown with each step that I took. Ethan, who had usually played in the same old places of the woods, was ecstatic about this adventure that had not been attempted before, while Ethan was experiencing a sense of connection with the wolf, which was a mixture of thrill and comfort, he started to realize that this adventure was about more than just following, it was about connecting with the wild in a manner that he had never experienced before as Ethan continued to follow the wolf deeper into the forest. He became aware of a connection that was beyond logic and transcended the passage of time. It was as if the call of the wild was resonating through his entire being, reawakening a fundamental connection to his ancestors. Ethan's attention was drawn to the symbols and inscriptions that were engraved into the stones and trees in a clearing. These were remains of old secrets that had been guarded by the forest for a very long time, it seemed as though the wolf, which was now standing in the clearing in a calm manner, was keeping a watchful eye on it with a sense of ownership and protection. The manner in which it behaved and the way it carried itself gave the impression that it was more than just a wild animal, it was a magnificent old oak tree that dominated the center of the clearing, and it functioned as the protector of the clearing. Ethan was drawn in, drawn in by the tree's intimidating presence which consisted of limbs that stretched wide and a trunk that was thick and old. Its existence was inextricably entwined into the history of the forest, and it stood as a quiet. Witness to the passage of time when Ethan looked more closely, he realized that the bark of the oak tree appeared to have distinctive marks that were precisely carved by human touch. At that moment, he had the sudden sense that he was standing on holy ground, not just any portion of the forest but a location that had been significant for a very long time. It appeared as though the wolf, which had led him to this location, possessed a level of understanding that was above that of an ordinary animal, in that split second when their eyes met. Ethan and the wolf had a profound comprehension of one other's perspectives, there was a reminder of the wild heart that was contained within the forest, and the howls resounded as a call to the wild, during the course of Ethan's voyage with the wolf, he had the impression that he was traveling with a legendary monster, he was further into the forest when he became aware of a communication coming from the forest itself, because each step took them through a world that was filled to the brim with wonder and mystery, the road that they traveled could be described as enchanted, when Ethan was in the company of the wolf, he felt a profound sense of harmony with nature that transcended the physical realm, he had the ability to sense the equilibrium and rhythm of life that was pulsating through the jungle, there were ancient trees, murmuring streams and whispers of the wind that were telling a story that had been unfolding for ages, their adventure became a living part of the forest's lore. It was as if they had passed through a portal into another planet, a hidden location that was previously unknown to the animals that lived in the forest but was now exposed to Ethan, there was a moment when a deer materialized before Ethan, making eye contact with him and expressing a profound level of comprehension before vanishing into the forest in complete silence. Ethan was left with a tremendous sense of awe and a deeper understanding for the complexities of the natural world as a result. Of these encounters, he started to realize that the wolf was on a mission, and that he was an essential component of it, the wolf led with intent, and every action was planned and meaningful, he began to comprehend this knowledge it appeared as though the wolf was tasked with a mission, which was to direct Ethan toward a particular location or revelation, with each passing second, the wolf, who was now serving as both the protector of the forest and his guide, led him in the direction of something that was becoming more and more significant. The mysteries of nature began to reveal themselves to Ethan as they continued their journey, the components of the forest that had before appeared to be unremarkable, such as the beautiful patterns of the leaves, the complicated songs of the birds, and the hidden life that existed under the underbrush, suddenly revealed their complex and enigmatic nature. Ethan could not help but feel as though he was witnessing the forest for the very first time, with a level of clarity and comprehension that he had never previously encountered. They went deeper into the forest, and as they did so, Ethan discovered more and more of the woodland's mysteries, small creatures skittering away into the shadows, plants that seemed to shine with an inner light, and trees that whispered secrets when the wind blew over them were some of the things that he started to notice that he had never noticed before, the forest appears to be a living, 
breathing entity that is full of mysteries that have not yet been explored, and each discovery is like a piece of a puzzle that is slowly constructing a picture of the forest, there was a reverberation of time throughout the voyage that was taken with the wolf, as Ethan strolled, he could practically feel the millennia of forest life that had surrounded him, he could feel the ancient struggles for survival, the peaceful growth of the trees, and the many seasons that had passed and gone. Not only were these echoes noises, but they were also feelings and impressions that had been imprinted onto the forest by all of the people who had lived there and traveled through it, collectively, they created a tapestry of time that was both eerie and beautiful throughout the voyage. The powerful presence of the spirit of the wild was something that Ethan could feel, the movements of the wolf, the way the trees appeared to speak with one another, and the air vibrating with electricity were all manifestations of this phenomenon, this spirit was wild and unrestrained, and it served as a tangible reminder of the unadulterated and potent nature of the natural world. An experience of being one with the wild was what Ethan had when he sensed a tremendous connection to this spirit, he felt a sense of belonging to something that was far larger than himself. Echoes gave the impression that the forest next to Ethan and the wolf was alive with activity, it was the rustling of the leaves, the distant calls of animals, and the murmuring of the creek that carried the enduring utterances of nature. Their journey was directed by these noises, and each reverberation. Added to the majestic symphony of the wilderness, when Ethan heard these sounds, he understood that these were more than just random noises, they were the forest's way of communicating with him, guiding him, and teaching him the mysteries of the natural world. The entire time that Ethan was traveling with the wolf, he was aware of a profound and resonant call from the natural world. Not only did this appeal stretch beyond the sounds of the forest itself, but it was also an invitation to his soul. Asking him to establish a meaningful connection with the natural world, the experience sparked something fundamental within him, namely an innate comprehension and admiration for the natural world. His response to this call from nature served as a reminder of his position within the enormous web of life, which in turn prompted him to go back to the beginnings of his existence.